Okay, hey everyone, this is Mr. A, and I'm going to talk about how to do line reflections with you today, constructions of course. Now I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. You can do it however you want. Over here I'm going to show you something I call like the imaginary point method, which is a little bit more elegant in my opinion, but we'll just go through and see how it goes. So I'm going to start on the left with what I'd say is the traditional method. You're going to take a point on your triangle, and you're going to open the compass up more than the distance to the line of reflection, right? So if we want to reflect over, say, this line L, okay? Then I'm going to open up my compass further than L, and I'm going to put an arc right through that line of reflection. Now, if you want to save yourself time, don't change that length on the compass. Keep it that way. And go to each of these two intersection points that you've just created, place the compass, and put an arc right through the center, sort of across from the original point C. So that would be there, and here for me. Oops, sorry, that was the same side. Now let's think about what we've just done over here. These are congruent, right? If I go from this point here to C, and this point here to C, those are congruent, so I've got an isosceles triangle. But since I didn't change the distance of my compass, from this point to there, and this point to there, are also the same distance. So all four of these are the same distance, which means I just constructed a what? A rhombus. Let me take a minute to draw it in here for you so that you can see it. All right, so if I put this line in here from C, so I can put a little dotted line in there from C to there, I can connect this to C here. Now when we first learned this in class, we didn't talk about this because we didn't know what a rhombus was yet. But now that you do, we can understand this construction a little bit easier. Because one of the things that you know about a rhombus is that the diagonals are what? Perpendicular. Right? So the diagonals of this rhombus, one of them is the line of reflection, the other is the line connecting C and this point over here. Which, if you haven't figured out already, that's going to be C prime. Because remember what a line reflection is doing. A line reflection takes a point and moves it so that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector between the point and its image. By constructing this rhombus, we've guaranteed that that is perpendicular to the line of reflection, and since the diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, it's a parallelogram, then of course that's also going to be the midpoint, making this a perpendicular bisector. In fact, just to drive that point home, I won't do this on the next one, but let's go ahead and draw that in as well to remind ourselves that that is in fact a perpendicular bisector. So that's what's driving this initial phase of the construction. I'm constructing a rhombus. Now for the other points, you can just repeat that. You can do a rhombus every time and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, so let's go over to A and we'll do the same thing. We'll open the compass up further than the distance to the line of reflection. We'll put an arc right through it. Now notice what happened here. I'm very close to going over my line. I didn't go over the line, but I'm pretty close. If I had, then all I would need to do is extend that line. It's no big deal. So I've got that first arc, and now without changing the length of the compass, I'm going to go to this intersection put an arc through the center, and then I'm going to go to the other intersection and put an arc through the center. And right there, that's going to be my A prime. Now, of course, you can do the same thing with B as well. Um, B, in this case, if I do that, it's going to get a little bit cluttered over here, right? Because I've got this arc here, so if I arc from B, it's going to start kind of overlapping with that one. So I'm not totally loving that. So I'll try something different. Since I already know two of the points in my triangle, I can use known distances now to locate B. So think about this. The distance from C to B in the original triangle, that has to be the same as the distance from C prime to B prime in the new triangle. Hopefully that should make sense to you, right? So from C to B has to be maybe just a smidge bigger there. From C to B has to be the same as from C prime to B prime. So B prime is going to be somewhere along that arc. But from A to B has to be the same as A prime to B prime. So I can take my compass and measure out from A to B. Let's see, get that there, right? Now that distance has to be the same as A prime to B prime. <coughs> now that right there is going to be my B prime point. So I go ahead and mark that. And I can now draw in my completed triangle. The construction elements are done. And I'm just going to connect these dots here. And of course, since a line reflection is an isometry, I should expect these two triangles to be congruent, and they are. You will notice that the order of the points change, the orientation, right? A, B, C clockwise here, A, C prime, B prime clockwise over there. So this is what I would call the traditional method, or sort of methanol, method one, of doing a line reflection. 
where you do this rhombus construction twice and then maybe locate the third point or another rhombus construction if you just love it. Over here I'm going to show you a slightly different method which I call the hidden point. Right? And you'll see why in just a moment. So over here I'm going to start exactly the same way. Say so I place the compass on F. I'm going to open it up more than the distance to the line. That's a little bit small, so I'll open it a bit more. And I'll just go ahead and arc right through there. And then without changing that distance, I'll go over here and I'll place an arc through there. And I'll go over here, place an arc, whoops, through there. Now notice this time my arcs intersected inside the original arc. That's just because F was relatively close to the original line. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We still have the rhombus that we need. I'll take a sec to just sketch it out for you. This time the rhombus is going, well, let me, let me keep that red, right? So the rhombus is going here. It's kind of a long skinny rhombus. Goes up to here. Goes down to here to F. And from F over to here. So once again, you see we're still constructing that rhombus. It's just that the rhombus, the other diagonal, is right on the inside there. So that point there is going to be F prime. We can go ahead and mark that one. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Instead of doing that construction again with D, I'm going to think about this point right here. So that's a point on the line of reflection. And when I reflect over a line, a point that's on the line of reflection isn't going to move. That point is going to be invariant, which means I can use it as a sort of distance marker. D, before the translation, or excuse me, before the reflection, is that far away from my hidden point. That's why I call this a hidden point. It's sort of the point that I just created. Well, D prime, doesn't that have to be the same distance from D? The same distance from this point as D prime was, right? D and this point have to be the same distance as D prime in that point. So this new point that I've created gets me a possible arc for D prime. To locate it precisely, I simply need a second distance. Well, since I know where F prime is, I can go ahead and use the distance from F to D. That has to be the same as the distance from F to D prime. And there I've very quickly located the D prime point. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with E. I can use the same hidden point here, right? That point and E have to be the same distance as that point and E prime, since that point won't move under the translation, excuse me, reflection. So if I place my compass there and open it up to E, let's see, that's just a little bit too big. That looks about right. And I can put an arc right across. Sort of looks like the bottom of a space capsule there. And somewhere on that arc has to be E prime. Because E prime can't get any closer to that point than, well, E prime can't be any closer than E was. It's got to be the same distance. So all I need to locate E prime is a second distance. Well, F will do the job. I know where F prime is. So if I just measure from F to E, let's set this up here. Let's see. From F to E, right there. I take that distance transfer it over to F prime and then that's going to show me exactly where to put E prime. It's going to go right down here where those intersect. There's my E prime and of course I can now go ahead and draw in my triangle D prime E prime F prime reflected over that line. Again since this is an isometry I'm going to do a visual inspection the triangle before the reflection should look just like the triangle after the reflection and I think you'd agree it does and that's all you need to do. So whether you want to use what I call the traditional method or the hidden point method, I think this one's a little bit cleaner and nicer, but it takes a little bit more of a sophisticated understanding of what's happening since you're using this point that didn't exist to begin with. So play with them both. Use whatever you're most comfortable with. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions.